So, everyone, welcome to the first episode of a, a practice war situation. As I all told you guys, uh, it's gonna be also on YouTube available. So everyone, everyone from you have the possibility to rewatch that, and also to everyone else to watch it when, if um, they need to do so. Um, so as you guys have wished for, we're gonna talk about today how to get better micro micromanagement. Since in my opinion, that is a big part of a game to have an understanding of not only the macro game of a game, uh, the macro management of a game. So like you know the big wars, what is the what are the strategies, the lines uh, structure and stuff like that. Like all of this have something to do with the macro uh, management. The micro management is basically by yourself, right? Like uh, micro management have always to do something um, with yourself, with your account, what you doing, what is your input in the game. That's first of all, right? So that's why this is so important to talk about, right? Since we are a team of 200 members, each alliance, and where not only macro management is really important, also micro management from each one. So I hope the information I give you today is gonna help you in terms of getting a better micro management, and then by that also increasing your merits per report in the game and having overall more fun in the game because you have a better micro management. Like literally, if you have a better micro management, you're gonna have more fun in the game. What is exactly micromanagement in Call of Dragons? Uh, like, if you think about that, what would be the first thing what came into your mind when you think about micromanagement in Call of Dragons? Like, what, what is the big part of that in Call of Dragons? Like, it's, it's pretty simple, right? Uh, if you think about that for a minute, Maybe someone from you came to that already. What exactly is the mic management? Does someone know that? If you think about mic management, have everything to do with the game related, like alliances, strategies, diplomacy, um, how you place yourself into the map and stuff like that. So if you think about that, what exactly is when the mic management, if you know that the mic management have to do with yourself? Is managing the truth correctly without zooming the screen? Basically. Uh, no, zooming the screen is also a part of a mic management, but you are correct. Like the, the big key of that is simple as that, like managing your own troops, right? Um, like this is one big part of a mic management in Call of Dragons. But not only. Micromanagement start, uh, starts only uh, already with the first day. It starts already from the moment you go into the game. So that means, did you plan ahead of your account? Do you know what type of troop you're gonna go? Do you know what type of heroes you're gonna go? Stuff like that. You're gonna do a farm account for extra resources. All of this stuff, like it starts basically already from the beginning. And that's why I also planned ahead the project, right? If you remember, um, some of you were already in the project when I pre-announced it, right? I started it in October last year, and um, we officially started it then in December, right? So all of this is already part of the micro management. And in that time where you plan ahead of your account, okay, what I'm gonna do with my account, this shows already your micromanagement. So basically you need to understand first of all the game mechanics. What do we have in the game? What type of troops do we have in the game? What types of heroes do have do we have in the in the game? Um like the technology speedings, all of these things, what you're doing by yourself on your account have something to do with my with the micromanagement. And that's why you can see also the the hard difference in the free to play on the low spender, right? Like if you think about for a moment, whales, yeah, sure. At some point they're gonna be uh, like at the top, they're gonna have everything. And then the micromanagement from them is really by how they fighting, right? But 
free to play low spender who uh who t it takes longer for them to increase their account who get better troop better heroes where it is really really important that they have an understanding of a uh, micromanagement in the game and that also includes exactly what i said the heroes farms uh, making farm accounts all of this stuff and that's why you can see so hard in the difference between an alliance who having these type of information and already have played these kind of games for years and giving you then also these information from the begin like i can tell you a lot of the core group from hh having this mindset right like they know exactly what to do uh they know what he was to focus on they know that saving means also that you can smart push all of this type of stuff right and this is already where micromanagement starts from the beginning actually also already from before you even have started the game and many don't know it. like or uh, it may be probably not in the knowledge people just don't care i would say so that's the thing like a lot of people probably don't care about that much that they would say okay i don't care right now what i'm gonna do but in moment where we're gonna join on a server where we really want to contribute contribute and let's say the server is a server like 293 when it becomes for them pretty stressful because they have not thought about before what they're gonna do right so that's you that's why you see it's so hard the difference between people who have already thought about that since the beginning and some people who have thought about that like weeks into the game this is this is a really huge part and unfortunately a lot of people yeah don't care or care too late about that so with a mindset of that that you basically micro your whole account over time like everything have to do cp burning hunting pets correct artifacts correct heroes leveling your correct artifacts first who are you gonna make six stars first of all right like all of these small things which artifact do you make six stars first because as we know each star giving you an extra buff so here again what are you gonna upgrade first right do you gonna upgrade some bullshit which you don't need or you're gonna upgrade first of all something which you really need for your war uh, heroes right like all of these small things basically making the difference between the account between the players who are gonna really care about the game and to having understanding of the micromanagement also stuff like playing the events correctly right uh lucky spin the the alpha you go for 10 spins or 100 spins right is the most value these are like small informations about the game which is gonna make your game uh in the long term more fun because you have managed your account better playing over the correct events uh like you to know when you're gonna push when not a lot of people especially in the beginning they just push that's what i did by myself in rise of kingdoms and on my first account i just pushed I didn't care at all when some events came up. I was like, yeah, I don't care. Like, I just gonna push. And what happened, like this account became very fast useless. And then in the next account I started, okay, I was like, okay, let's take a closer look into events, into the micromanagement. And what happened, like this account become that much stronger than my first account, Rise of Kings. Right? And, and, and Call of Dragons is not really a different game. It's just having some different uh, gameplay mechanics. So to know all of these things and to really understanding then also the things that, okay, we have here events, we have here different heroes, we have here different artifacts, we have here the technology, the buildings, all of these small things at the end gonna make a difference between a good account and a shit account. Not gonna lie. So, basically, I think some of you already knew about this information, right? But a lot of people, like, they just did their thing, right? Like, for for example, here right now on my account, I, I can give you the best example. 
on my account here right now, you see I have no biddings going on, right? So if I know that my micromanagement, you know, I'm wasting time here basically right now, you could say so. On the other hand is, why do I need to upgrade my biddings right now? Right. So I know that I will not hit T5 in like the next two months on Vickers account. So there's no need for me to push yet these biddings. Like there's no need, right? So instead of wasting resources on something which I don't need right now, I just gonna focus my resource, which, which I gonna farm on bringing up my technology. Because of that, I have focused all my resources, especially after having a two and a half uh, week war, like we all had no resources, right? Like some people message me and ask me, hey, can I go out of a war? I need to farm resources so I can do my stuff here on the, on the account, right? So I was in a position, okay, what am I going to do? So I said, all right, I'm going to focus on technologies. And you see my economy is almost done. And now I do not do the war tech. Like this is, the, this is what I mean about micromanagement, to understand the type of gameplay and the type of, okay, what do I need to do now? What is important and what is not important, right? Like, that's basically the micromanagement. Like one part of the micromanagement about your game is how you manage your account. Um, so with that knowledge in your mind, now we have your heroes correctly upgraded, your he uh, artifacts correctly upgraded, you're doing your correct technologies, correct buildings, all of this type of stuff. Like Drake's, uh, Drake said, is managing the troops also big part of how to micromanagement in the game. So um, as we know at the end of a game, what we all play it for are the wars, right? So how can you exactly make your uh, micromanagement of the troops better? Well, as the answer is so simple, is basically just practicing. Right, like the, the, the best answer for that is literally just to practice. Um, I coming from Voice of Kingdoms, right? So in Voice of Kingdoms, there's the thing that you don't have these, um, you don't have these range. So how, how can you imagine that? Like basically how you can imagine is that your fighting style in Voice of Kingdoms is like melee versus melee. It doesn't matter if it's archers, infantry, or cap, right? So you're fighting like this over time in melee versus melee. What that makes is that you be coming into a position where you have like hundreds of marches on a very small clump position, right? So you have basically one ball on the enemy side, one ball on your side, and you basically just doing all the, the time these things, right? You're managing all the time your accounts in a position where you can get fucked up in a second. In Call of Dragons, I find it, uh, how to say correctly in English, uh, less dreadful if you're fighting on the open field, in my opinion, since you don't have, or most of the times, not having these big boards. Uh, big boards. Um, so what that basically did to me of playing three years of Rise of Kingdoms is that I understood so fast the game mechanic of how to micro your troops and a on phone or PC. So that means to position your troops first of all correctly in a war situation, but also to have the reaction time to, you know, know, okay, when I going in now, I gonna die. So I gonna step out for a second and then going in back again. And that's the same thing here in Core Franks. So it's hard now to, sh to show you that when you don't have a war. So the idea is that if you're like having hundreds of marches on the field, you're zooming out, right? You're zooming out into the whole tactical view. So you have only the icons on your screen. What that makes is that you're basically having less legs in your on your game. You're having more FPS and it's overall easier for you to target the correct marches, right? 
on the on if you if you're having these if you're having this look where you have basically the whole march where you can see the whole march it's way more laggy right so it becomes very stressful and basically for some people especially when you play on phone it's not possible for you to micro your like your matches correctly right so what you want to do is you want to scroll out a bit so you're coming into detective reviewed the the difference now here is not to screw uh, zoom out that much because if you zoom out like this much then it's becoming not in real time anymore so you want to really just zoom out like this like only from the position where you see the whole marches into the tactical view and as you can see it's in real time so what that makes to you is basically you are ha having overall more fps you're having overall the possibility to micro again your marches here better um and what makes that is giving you obviously better reports in terms of merits and also in terms of investing less troops right and you wouldn't believe me but even in season six people don't know about tactical view so that's why this that's this is like you can't imagine that even in season six people don't know about tactical view like you would you would laugh about me if i like but this is true i don't know how people have played over time literally especially on the phone like i don't know but people didn't know so that's why i said this you know that's basically how you can better micromanagement your troops right you scroll out a bit so you're having this tactical view but you're still having it in real time so what that makes is that you can select your troops here right and then you can attack and go back attack go back right you see it and basically of course it's like having one millisecond delay but you see it's almost in real time right and that's how you having then the possibility to get better reports because you can on pc you can just press ctrl plus a right and then you right click over time like this and having the possibility to see then also from the enemy like the wet marches right the marches who are attacking right now you can see it a difference between um that the icon is um white and if it's attacking when it's red so the moment you see like a red march you, you know okay this march is attacking so it's afa like standing still right now or it might be chasing one of your allies marches so what you can do is when attacking this march and in the moment you see this march turning into white and going back Right, you see it because it's in real time. So what you can do is you can just step back. You can just right click, or if you're on the phone, you just um, pull them back, and basically getting out of combat for that, right? And in this mode, you're getting way better trades, in my opinion. Yeah, we can we can do that. Yeah, yeah, I can do that too, Moody. Um. So that's basically how you micromanage your troops, right? You you scrolling out if you're having way too less legs. If not, you and you wanna have these overview like um, or the better graphic view um, from the war. You can obviously also zoom in. What it also makes you see it's it's reacting better, right? It's almost reacting, yeah, like it's actually reacting better. Um, on phone and iPad, I would always mention to do the tactical view because it's overall just better. The phone and iPad have not the performance to outperform a PC in a combat when hundreds of marches are there on the field. And that's how you basically practice. Right? Like Micromanagement is a big topic, but it's not really something I can show you exactly. Right, I you can you can watch my streams. Uh, that's what we can do, right? We can we can watch my streams, um, and there I can show you exactly what I mean. So let me change my screen to YouTube here. So if you go into my streams, 
and now I also just need to find a better uh that's on three more Uh, something more where so you can see here on the on this what what I mean right now, right? You're seeing here the the white icons and the red icons. The white icons, you know, these marches relevant in combat. For like the last 15 seconds and the red march is red so well it's uh, right now bad time i want to have you that better yeah yeah so in this position you see that they're pushing us right so um the thing here is now you can't just stand still and attack right so what do you Either you say, okay, I'm going to back off completely until my leadership is saying we're going to counterattack. Or what you're going to do is you can hit one, hit one, hit one. And that are we called, uh, calling kiting, right? That's what I said all the time in a war, guys, kite them, kite them. If, you, if they're pushing us and we don't have the numbers, kite them. That's called what you, when you're going to kite. You, you want to hit someone without getting hit back like this is this is a this is basically kiting what you're gonna do i know it's a it's more a thing or um for english speakers so the asian people probably don't understand what i mean with that um but that's what you're gonna do right like you're not just standing still and getting killed by hundreds of marchers right you you either say okay i'm gonna back off a little bit here or i have a micromanagement to have also the action time of I can hit them and in the next second I can go back again. Like that I'm not getting targeted by like 50 sec uh, 50 marches in like one second. Because trust me, if you get if you're getting hit here by all of these marches, because you stand still for like one second, you see, like look at all these marches staying at the front line for like one second too long. You see, and they dying immediately. Right? So this is this is basically how you can practice. If like it's not really something I can give you in terms of, you know, okay, we're gonna do this now and do this now, and then we're having a better understanding. It's not like what I could do when we having the choke point discussion, right? Like uh, explaining to you what to do in the choke point situation and how to push through. Micromanagement is something what is done by yourself. So with these information, guys, you need new, uh, you need to go now into the wars which you're gonna play in Call of Dragons and yeah, basically understand. Okay, you know, like let's have a better look on it and better reaction time. Um, I mean, the only thing what I can mention you to do so is basically what you can do is like learning this type of stuff to hit something and then back off right to prevent so you could click on a dark thing hit go back hit go back like that you're getting this type of mindset and you know that that you're having that your brain and understands this type of movement and that you're doing it automatically in a war that's what you could do to like learn it but the best thing obviously is just to do in a war and yeah, that's, that's something I can't really give you right now. You just had the, the practice for. Maybe you getting already in your mind what you what I'm talking about with like hit and uh, run back um, and not just standing still and getting killed. Maybe you remembering some situations in the two and a half war in against GB and LB where exactly this type of thing happened. And yeah. That's all information I have for micromanagement. Um, what it got already mentioned is also to turn off. Why did it turn off? To turn off uh, a drag legion target. 
So you want to only having in war player legions. So you're not hitting rallied armies and darklings. That's by the way, also a shoot setting. So this is something which you should turn on when you uh, turn, yeah, turn on when we have war. A lot of CP. Yeah, sure. Like I have a lot of CP, right? So, um, I should use them now because the season summary is right. Like the season summary is in eight hours. So if I don't use my CP right now, it's not getting counted toward the season summary. Uh, yeah, I can show you on Discord as well. Hold on. So in Core of Dragons, you have a setting. Uh, when when you go to your Legion overview, you have in the top here a little icon. If you click there, you have Drag Legion Target Selection, and you can turn this type stuff and on, on and off, right? So if you have War, you wanna only hit Player Legion, so you are turning this one only on. Reddit armies you can turn off in the wall as well as Darkling Legion. So you see I have this one now turned off. So what, what that does is I can't hit Darklings anymore. You see? I can't hit Darklings anymore. It's not possible. As well as with Reddit armies when I have that turned off. So what that makes is that no one gonna hit accidentally Darklings anymore. Remember back in the war, guys, when like we pushed the ramp and there was a darkling on it, and someone have hit it. Remember back, right? So this is a thing also like which you should really care about and turn it on or off. <clears throat> so yeah, if you have any questions, guys, let me know. Otherwise. That's all I can tell you about micromanagement. Um, this this just uh, uh, Zakika, this just came with a new update. So, do you guys have any questions toward the micromanagement? But I mean, it should be everything clear towards that. Like, like it sounds so ridiculous easy what I told you, and if you think about that, it you 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 already know that, right? It's not something that this is really a huge thing, but some people forget pretty easily to do the small things correctly, right? And that fucked up their accounts then. In mobile, it is difficult to recognize T5 players if we zoom out that much. Yeah, well, that's a that's a huge problem, right? If you with a tactical view, if you're going into the tactical view, what that makes is that you don't see markers, right? So if I mark myself or like um, an enemy legion, you don't see it. You see the um, markers from the lines, but you can't see the individual markers. So you can see the marker when I have on my troop, for example, when we like grouping up for a board or when we hitting someone specific on the field. So that is a big minus point of a tactical view. Um, as well as Drake said, you can't see the t uh, difference between T5 and T4. I mean, later in the game, it doesn't matter anymore, right? Like on my main account, for example, since like three seasons, it doesn't matter anymore when someone is T5 or not, you just kill it. It doesn't matter anymore. So it might be already for us in the next season, be like, Shh, oh yeah, T5, hmm. just focus it. And uh, there probably not gonna be anything anymore like marking stuff in, so. But yeah, that's a, that's a minus point of a tactical view, that's, that's correct. Yeah, so if you think about that for a moment, guys, it's not something which is like completely breaking the game right now, right? This information I gave you, like everyone know about that. 
but sometimes like people just forgetting that and they just playing the game and doing the stuff but not really thinking about what they're doing right so yeah that was it basically you have any any questions to what that guys i saw you were doing the economy tree before the war tree is there a reason why you are doing that so first of all this comes also down again to what type of account you have right um so on this account here on my second account i know i'm not spending like much like i don't spend i haven't spent since weeks so what that does basically is that you uh, account having limited resources and limited speed ups right um based on that but i know okay i'm not getting really much resources from paying so if i'm doing this economy tree now and i farm actively i'm getting a lot of resources per day just from farming and also resource um resources from the production right so it comes also down again to your type of gameplay right like if you are a hard spender or not if you're a hard spender when you can really just ignore mostly the economy tree and just focus on your war tech and get it done since the economy tree is overall just a couple of days it doesn't really matter that much so but since i not gonna spend that much on this account or not spending anymore i said okay i need to get the economy tree done because first of all it's gonna help me in terms of getting more resources but also in terms of this is just like a couple of days each it's not really taking a lot of time right so i just had it finish how do i prior, uh, prioritize the policies at season beginning do i go for a huge legion or for a better hospital or something else well um it depends right like in the, in the be begin of seasons you have behemoths so there might be a bigger legion site smarter um but you definitely need for the wars the all the seas done for healing right like this is really what matters at the end from the policy trees to get more healing done the legion capacity sure it's nice to have for behemoth uh, stuff you know to clear it faster but at the end what why you're doing policies is for the healing and the other stuff is just extra things like more gathering speed more cp more xp more um you know more uh, uh what is it called warrants for daily pet hunting all of these stuff is just extra things why you're doing at the end the policies is for the healing so that's what you're focusing on all right um also to everyone on youtube if you have any questions guys let me know in the comments i will answer them if i have the time and if you see it and yeah i know micromanagement you would think it's a huge topic but it's not really it's not like a it's not like league of legends or rpg games you know core ranks not having a really big part of micromanagement it's more about macro uh, management um so yeah um i hope this information is going to help you in terms of having a better understanding now on what to care of in the game what to look on especially in the war it's really just practice this type of reaction scroll out, scroll out go in tactical view take like i don't know a couple minutes every day and just getting this mindset like this movement into your brain if you're on the phone uh pull them back and forth if you're on a pc right click over time back and forth and get this type of yeah movement in your brain so it's easier for you than in a war to automatically doing that like i do it automatically now i shall see in less than a second okay i need to get out i gonna oh i die like this is how fast i can react already to this type of um war situation and how i need to micromanagement my troops in a war sure sometimes i do also mistakes mistakes at the end 
we are all humans, right? So mistakes is something which we're really part of. This is not something where you're getting a 100% over time good report. There are going to be mistakes happening. It's not guaranteed that you're going to hit every report 20k plus merit. You know, sometimes you're misclicking and then you're dying in a second. Happens. Happens to me also. But it, um, it's it's going to come down to, like, basically most of the time if you can do this or not. And that's where you see also then the difference between people who are getting a lot of merits. Sure, they're active, but maybe having also a good micromanagement, right? So, yeah, I hope this information is going to help you all in terms of getting more merits, better reports, investing less troops, each uh, report, and, yeah, having more enjoyable time on the field because of this, that we're having a better micromanagement, because we're having more troops available, getting more merits, and then I would say the game is also more fun for everyone. So, yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I will put out later a new vote already for the next um, practice war situation. So uh, stay tuned to that. All right, guys. I wish you a great rest of the day. Or have a great start in the next day. And we're going to see us then on the next one.